Hello and welcome to the Vita Weekly Update, where I take the news of the week and compress it into a bite-sized video. Sorry if the audio sounds a bit different this week, but my big computer, which I usually record these on, has finally given up, so I'm going to have to record it using a different setup for now. Xseed revealed two games this week, the first being Corpse Party Blood Drive. The Western retail release of Blood Drive will come in an Ever After edition, which includes a two-disc soundtrack and an art book, each containing content from all three titles of the franchise. The game will launch in the fall in North America. And the second game announced by Xseed is Earth Defense Force 2, Invaders from Planet Space. The widely regarded best game in the series is coming to the West in the fall in North America, with a new English dub and absolutely fantastic logo joining the rest of Earth Defense Force 2v2's content. Electronic Superjoy, an indie platformer from developer Michael Todd, is also coming to Vita sometime in September. The game combines a simple 2D aesthetic with rock hard difficulty and electronic music. Not many other details have been released for the Vita version so far, except for Vita TV compatibility. Bandai Namco have announced Sword Art Online Lost Song for Vita and PS4 is coming to the West this fall. The sequel to Hollow Fragment contains new air battles, customization options and other improvements. Not many other details on the release are available yet. Compile Hard have revealed the third game in the Moero series, Moero Crystal, in which a portal opens in the skies thanks to the disappearance of the Panties of Hope and the Bra of Eternal Darkness. The game will show up in Japan sometime in the winter. Loot Interactive, the developers of Qbert Rebooted, have revealed that they plan to publish three new titles on Vita, PS3 and PS4. A 2D adventure horror game called Whispering Willows, an isometric puzzle game called Back to Bed, and a high-speed endless runner called Velocibox. All three games are slated for the summer. Super Exploding Zoo, the game about defending your eggs with explosive animal projectiles, is coming to Vita on the 2nd and 3rd of June, as revealed by the PlayStation Plus listings for both North America and Europe. The game will be free to PlayStation Plus subscribers, no price for non-subs yet. Smash Derby, a new top-down car combat game, has been announced for the Vita and PS4 and is coming sometime in the summer. Not many other details are available as of yet. One Piece Pirate Warriors 3 now has dates. North America gets the game on August 25, while Europe and Australia get the game on August 28. Axis Games have announced they're localizing yet another Otome game, one of Idea Factory's titles, Norn 9 Var Commons. The game is about a group of traveling psychics who ride around on a floating wooden ship. No, I'm not kidding. The game will be out in the fall in the US. Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 3 is getting a special edition in North America. The set has the game, a box, a paper craft purple heart, a purple heart, an iris heart mouse pad, and a case sleeve. The edition costs $57.99 US. Persona 4 Dancing All Night is also coming in the fall and is also getting a special edition. The Disco Fever edition comes with a box, 2 CD soundtrack, 14 costumes and a bonus song, a keychain, a Vita skin, and a Vita pouch for $80 US with the base game confirmed to be $50 US. Finally this week, two little things. Sparkle Unleashed comes out in next week's update in the US and Europe and will cost $5 or your original equivalent. Meanwhile, Looney Tunes Galactic Sports has seen a surprise release in European territories. That's it for this week. Well, what a wonderful time for Weekly Update 150, huh? Not only does my big computer go down the toilet, but I find out I need glasses. And that's not what we're here to talk about, really. Before I get started on the really long rant that is wrong that I'm doing to commemorate this crap milestone that is crap, I just wanted to talk about this silly statement made by Andrew House that implied the Vita is a legacy system and won't be getting any more support from Sony US or Europe. Let's just think about it for a second. Either way, it really has no effect on us. Think about it. The major Vita exclusives we got in 2014 from Sony were Freedom Wars, Soul Sacrifice Delta, and Orishika Tainted Bloodlines. 
games purely developed by the Japanese side and localized for us. Everything else was games developed, prompted, or whatever from Sony. It's just something from the third party productions team like Borderlands 2 or just independent games in general. Really, them announcing that Western Vita development will be taking a backseat means nothing because Vita development already took a backseat in the West after Tearaway bombed in 2013. Nothing changes and we go on like we did before. Even if they try to retract it, well, I, well they actually have tried to retract it, thanks script for being written in the past, they have announced, they'd have to announce something huge at E3 to get away with being able to actually retract that statement. And we all know how E3 2014 turned out, seeing my video from last year. So, yeah. Off the negative subjects. It's weekly update 150! Hooray! I've been at this nonsense for three years now. Or at least close to it, because I'm not celebrating weekly update 156, because that is an entirely too silly a number, and I just figured I would do this sort of self-encouraging talk that despite how badly Sony seems to want to throw the only decent handheld competitor out the window for Nintendo, I'm still here and I'll probably hold on until the ship hits the ground. Although one of these days, honestly, I'm probably going to want to start diversifying out towards the PlayStation 4 and maybe even some other consoles. But I'm not planning on doing that right now, except I would like to hear some opinions on whether or not people would actually like to see my videos, just my regular gameplay videos done, but over remote play for PS4 titles. Because I would like to be able to do this format with PS4 games, but People seemed rather averse to me doing that sort of format the last time I asked, but I would like to try again, it has been a while, and who knows, maybe more people will like it. So there is a straw poll, and you can always just leave a comment to talk about that. So yeah, next subject. I got one of those L2R2 remote play grips recently, and although it's going to be taking me a little bit of time in order to actually get my recording setup fixed so I can actually do that sort of video, I do plan on doing an in-depth video on the thing when I get the chance, which will hopefully be sometime soon. But I have a little bit of trouble figuring out which games will be best to advertise on the thing. If you guys have a game you'd like to see on the grip, just in general, in the video, then leave a comment below telling me what game it is. I plan on showing off at the very least Shadow of Mordor, but community input on what specific titles will be improved will be great. Remember though, the grip only works on the rear touch, so games with mainly front touch controls won't be fantastic to work with. Also, of some no some actual Vita games that might work, I'm aware of Disgaea using the rear touchpad for camera controls, but not much else comes to mind. And now for PlayStation Mobile. At this time, I've gotten 20 out of 45 videos done and they'll be released as soon as possible. Although with my recording kit currently being out of action, I'm not going to be putting out like four a day or something. But with the game schedule the way it is right now, there's no way everything I have backed up will be released on time, even if I double up videos on some days. So I'm planning to do a thorough look at the entirety of PlayStation Mobile in one video like I did back at 10,000 subs for the whole of the Vita store. And it's going to be on the 1st of July, two weeks before the store goes down. It won't be videos of every title, but just going through the store and talking about the games I've played, since I've arguably played the entirety of the library, or at the very least 90% of it, I like to think it'll be comprehensive enough. Hopefully there'll be a point where they'll stop releasing titles so it can be comprehensive. But yeah, again, that all depends on when I can get my recording set up back up and running, but hopefully that won't be too long. But that's enough about where the channel is right now. What I want to know is where you want me to take it. As implied before by the comments from Andrew House and other such events, the Vita is going in a very strange direction. And I'm wondering just how I should handle things from here on in. I've been wanting to bring back the Vita box as something I could live stream, but I have no idea how to make that work or how many audience members I'd have actually watching it. I want to bring back an idiot in ports in some sense, but every game I go to cover gets localized at some point and it's starting to annoy me. I want to start diversifying to PS4 to give myself more range and practice at this game critique thing, but I don't know how well the current audience would take it. Maybe I should just put up a sample video of what I'd do on at least a PS4 game and see what the reaction is. Either way, this is a pretty big turning point and I just want to know what you guys think where I should go in the future. But that's the year 3 rant over. Don't expect many gameplay videos outside of PlayStation Mobile for a little while as I'm waiting for the replacement part to help me record video, Vita videos on this computer here that I'm using to record this right now. Like, subscribe, comment, share the video around if you liked it, follow me on Twitter, at Blue Maxima. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, it's been three years, and I don't know, here's the seven more. <laughs> this has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.